Well, hello everybody. Welcome to our 11th episode of Norris Lee TV. Now, coming up on this week's episode, uh, we discuss the reopening of the show. Day, which belongs very much a local issue. And then we meet uh, the JSOC leaders of three local schools in London, who are all members of our school. And we meet the Caves and we conclude with a surprise musical end. Oh, yeah. It's amazing that we opened up the show this past weekend. How'd you find it on Shabbat itself, yeah. July 4th? Indi you know, it's American Independence Day. It was very strange. I woke up Shabbat morning like, oh, I'm going to shul. Um, I got there and uh, it, it wasn't that bad. It was very nice. Um, I think it's the first time ever when I've got there at the beginning, stayed there till the end and not, I didn't get out of my seat in the middle because there was no other minion to get, there's no youth service, no children's service, which we missed and please God they'll be back soon. But the actual service was okay that, you know, we started um, towards the middle of the davening already at Shekhinad, so Pacifica Zimbra I'd done at home, put the rest up when I got back home. Um, and the, you can see that the, the Chaza and the Rabbi, the wardens have really worked hard in all the planning because it, it ran smoothly, just the momentum. It did. It wasn't, it, it wasn't rushed, it just yeah. they got on with it. Yeah, and even the, people thought there was going to be a line to get in to show. There wasn't a line, Every, you know, everybody was able to walk in nicely and respectably, and they took their masks and they walked up. I mean, although uh, there were some, you know, people having issues with the breathing through those masks, the medical masks, but I think it's- Oh, I hate it, honestly. Uh, you have to try the cotton ones. The cotton ones I had, we had ordered a black ones from Amazon, so much more breathable. So- I've been, I've been advised to speak to Madeline Cohen. She's got good advice on how to make sure it doesn't steam up your glasses. Like yes, the glasses is, is a definitely, we had a, a uh, big mazel tov this morning, a first aliyah for Pini Babel. Yes. Yeah, his first yeah. aliyah. And, we, um, and, the, and, the, and the bar mitzvah this Shabbos was really something special to be able the bar mitzvah, to... The Benz, and uh, I'm very happy for the Benz because they got really the best of both worlds. He lamed in shul the first week back and they also did it on Zoom on the Sunday um, right. where more people from out of town could join as well. So really got the best of both worlds and that could be a good model going forward if I'm honest with you. Because, you know, even with the lockdown eased, there's still many restrictions on how many people, right. also people coming from out of town and out of the cut from abroad. Uh, so we can do the, uh, he laid a very small part of his portion on the Sunday, plus the rabbi addressed him on Zoom. So it's a very good model that. And they felt it's a good mix. Yeah. To be able to it's, bring the virtual world and the, and the real world together. Yeah. Yeah, the best of everything. We like a bit of everything, don't we? We also, we should mention that we also had a couple of birthdays. Uh, we have uh, Alan Cohen, who reached 90 years old. 90 today, uh, yeah. Yes, and we also have Hilary Halter, who turned 80 Hilary Halter's birthday today. today. So happy birthday, Hilary. So, so you know what, like you said, you know, there was such a team effort to bring this all together. Now let's go to Rabbi Freeman and David Galan, who discusses the, the success of the reopening of the show. Over to you. Okay, well, we're one week in now, or one day in, to our new open shul. And first of all, I want to say Yasha Koach, David Galan, our incredible, incredible warden, who nonstop, round the clock, and especially the last few weeks, you've been just doing, pulling out all the stuff to make sure that we were open for that very first Shabbos. And we say to you, Yasha Koach, on behalf of the entire community, um, we did it. You did it. Thank you. Did, and thank you. Yashiko. Yashiko. So I guess let's start with, tell us some of the challenges coming in to get to this point and then some of the joys and things that worked and didn't work. Thank you. Uh, I mean, some of the challenges, to be honest, um, Mark just stepped in and um, he just solved everything and made it a lot easier than it would otherwise have been. I think a lot of other United Synagogue schools are further behind um, and because of Mark um, and the work he did in keeping the building running throughout lockdown, just ticking over, um, just meant that it was, uh, it was, in the end, it was quite easy. I mean, which all, of course, the challenges of dealing with all of the guidelines from the government and the United Synagogue and making sure that we complied with everything, um, but, 
Yeah, Mark made it really easy. Oh, well, we, you know, we couldn't have done it without, without your guidance, so, <laughs> so you have to come up. Now, the big day arrived, everybody came in uh, yesterday morning. Uh, you davened at both Minyanim. Um, tell me, what were your thoughts? Did, did it work? What worked? What didn't work? Um, I think generally it worked. Um, I think the I think we learned um, certainly by by the second minion by nine thirty. Um, we we learned a little bit more. About the hush come guinea pigs. The hush come guinea pigs. Um, but uh, look, we're lucky again to have cousin of Romy, um, and um, we have the challenge of not being able to sing. But um, with cousin of Romy and guiding us through and telling us kind of what he was going to do, what we should do, what we shouldn't do. Um, I think. The, the general consensus of what I heard from people coming out was it's really not as bad as we thought it would be. Wow. Um, so, um, masks and, and all. Masks and all. Masking and, tape and all. <laughs> so I think the gen, yeah, I mean, I think the message is um, if you haven't come and if you're scared of coming, of course, then um, that's your, you should stay away. Um, we're not forcing anyone to come. But if you're inquisitive, if you are thinking about coming back or, and are hesitating just because you think it's it's going to be pretty grim then just come try it out um and it's we will do everything we can to um ease the restrictions um so we're hoping that um by the start of august the united synagogue will think again about um uh, about the two meter distancing maybe we'll be able to bring more people in um and again we will do whatever we can to relax things like face coverings but um until we get the go ahead from the powers that be and um, we our hands are tied. So. Uh, although I have to say, I mean, we didn't quite reach capacity, so we still do have room even on the two meter rules. Right. And and even if we were still on the two meter rules for some weeks, I mean, we have Plan B, which is the staggered um, other Absolutely. services. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if more people want to come, we are we're ready, um, and we can accommodate um, almost as many people that want to come on a Shabbat morning. We think we can handle. Um, the numbers that we used to have um, just by running staggered services. Right. And, and certainly, um, I, I might be um, jumping the gun a little here, but um, while, while I know that priority is for our NARS team members, if there's anybody whose shul is not yet open, um, Orthodox or non-Orthodox, everybody's welcome in our, in our building. Yeah, everyone would be welcome. Um, obviously, everyone has to book in advance. Um, we will, if we are oversubscribed for any particular service or in total, then we will try and give priority to members. Um, and within that, we'll give priority to people saying Kaddish or people with your site. But, um, but yeah, everyone's welcome. Great. And, and I, I might add, um, you, you might, people might be hearing from um, some of your relatives and friends who missed Simchas because we have Simchas that were missed during lockdown and they are talking about when is when the first Aliyah will be, uh, when other milestones will be. So, so you know, stay tuned to you know, keep asking your friends when these Simchas that didn't happen uh, or didn't happen in their entirety. Because I have to say, you know, it's been a lot of fun, though, um, all the uh, Zoom and other for uh, social media that we've been able to achieve uh, the, these special occasions. Uh, but we need to be able to round it out. So, so you know, if we can do that, we are there for whoever uh, we can serve. Uh, no matter who you are, we are here in RSD to, to, to serve everyone's every need. So, Yashikoach, David, Yashikoach to the other David as well, the other warden, and to James, our new chair and to your entire HO and council teams. Um, you guys are incredible. Uh, such a wonderful support yes, for, for the rabbinic team and for all of the staff and for all of our community. Thank you, thank you, thank pleasure. you. It, and it is really a team effort. Um, I was maybe a folk, like trying to lead the effort, but couldn't have done it without everybody else. Excellent, excellent. thank you. Well, thank you very much, David. It's lovely to hear that people had a great experience to come back. and. So we definitely uh, respect and care for those who are not ready, and that's why we, or at least for the weekday minyanim, we're going to go virtual, and so they can still feel part of the Norsley family. So, Rabbi Guntag, you interviewed some very special boys this week. I did. Um, since the lockdown began, I'd been to uh, virtual lunch and learns at various schools around town, which I had been to previously 
uh, in real life, but now that obviously everything's taken online. Um, so through the big schools, through the big non-Jewish schools uh, in London, there's Habs. Um, I didn't go to the girls, but I did the boy, Habs boys, uh, UCS and City of London. Now, each of these non-Jewish schools have a very strong Jewish society within the school, very active, and oh. each have a nominated and elected leader of wow. the society. Uh, and the three boys, the three JSEC leaders of each of these three schools are members of the youth in our shul. So it's obviously something we're very proud of. Amazing. So that's, really, that's amazing. The three schools are the three leaders from our Norsley family. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Um, wow. That's some, that says something very, very well, indeed. Very uh, Hilary Hilter calls our magazine Norris Leader. We're a community. That's of, right. But from the young to the old, you know, and everyone in between, we're a lot of leaders here. Uh, and it starts at a young age, so uh, you know we're very proud of their involvement. Uh, they're very active in our youth services as well, which returns this week. Please God, I'm looking forward to seeing all the boys and the girls uh, in shul. Um, so yeah, I had a little chat with them, and here, yeah, take a look. Here we have three community leaders within our own community. Community leaders. So we've got Joe Sinclair, who's the head of the JSOC at uh, UCS. We've got Benjamin Smith, who's the head of City of London School, JSOC. And Sam Wilson of Habs Boys. Welcome all of you to Norris Lee TV. You are live to the nation, so we'll try and behave ourselves a little bit. Um, so Joe, why don't you tell us how you got to the position you're in now? I believe uh, you're recently appointed. How did you get there? Well, I've only really been the head for two weeks now and I'm a co-head with another kid in my year. And to be honest, I think we kind of took it from someone in the year above, because normally the year above us take JSOC, but we've realized that there's never JSOC in the summer term because the next year they have to do A-levels. So we kind of took over the role in lockdown and we hope to just let it roll over in September. Fantastic. So, so what are your plans for September? Well, JSOC, to be honest, it's kind of taken less, a few less people have started coming off. We've realised it's the same people that were coming since year seven, and we don't really have any younger people. So we're planning to appeal to a lot younger people. We don't know whether we're going to do that with more food or more activities, but it's probably going to be the former, because that's what they do every year. But we that's hope it. to change it up a little bit. Nice, very good, very good. And what about you, Sam? I know you've been in for quite a while, and I've had the pleasure of uh, attending your JSOC lunches at all of your three schools. Um, and uh, Sam, and I think you've been in there the longest. So how has that gone for you? Yeah, it was. Uh, I have it. It was certainly a pleasure to have you. Um, we've had some really, really good speakers uh, this year. Um, on Zoom, we've had Rafi Burge uh, during lockdown, who is the author of the Red Sea Spies, talking about the Israeli mission to rescue the Ethiopian Jews. And we've also had some high profile speakers uh, this year and last year, um, where I was on the committee as well. Um, but we're, we're looking forward to bringing in some high profile speakers beginning of September where we can all get back in person. But, and did you find it easier to find speakers over Zoom or when you brought them into the school before the lockdown? I think people like coming in to speak in person but i think it's easy for them to speak over zoom they don't have to take as much time out of their schedule and they generally have less on yeah okay that's cool oh thank you sam and now uh, what about you benjamin how's, how's it been going for you how long have you been in post first of all well so i've been ahead sort of since the beginning of the summer term so basically only online sessions so i don't really have experience with the with running in-person sessions. And I think talking about sort of speakers coming in, I found that the good thing about online sessions is you can get speakers from abroad. So we've had a couple of people in Israel who are able to do the Zoom sessions who would never be able to come over in person. So I think there are definite advantages to it. Yeah, we found that here as well, like with our Bar Mitzvah program and other events, we've got speakers from, we one from America, one in Israel. Um, I had to speak in New York for a different um, event, and it's amazing, you know, you pay the speakers fee, wherever it is, or some of them are free, but you don't have to bring them over. So we've actually made the most of this new online platform to bring in more people. Have you had any embarrassing moments, any of you, over them? Because we, I was at a rabbi's meeting recently, and one of them 
I uh, wasn't wearing much from the waist down, shall we say. Um, and he made the mistake of standing up. It was very funny. Uh, I'd love to tell you who it was, but I believe we are allowed. I'll tell you afterwards. Um, and uh, any, any of you had any embarrassing Zoom? Yeah, um, I, I think my grandma might watch this, so I hope she doesn't mind me telling this story. Um, but she joined, she and my grandpa joined the first of our Habs Zoom JSOC sessions. And a lot of people were fiddling with their virtual background. I think my, my father was in Switzerland and a couple of people were in, by the pyramids in Egypt. And one person was on Tel Aviv Beach. And I get some very interesting texts from my grandma halfway through saying, I don't know how he's managed to get away. I thought there was a lockdown on. He's in he's Tel Aviv Beach. <laughs> Not realising that yeah. my father was in Switzerland and she'd just seen him earlier that day. Um, and then realising it was virtual backgrounds, but that was that was quite entertaining. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Anyone else? Any good stories? I mean, we have the sort of standard, every session you have one kid who doesn't turn off his microphone, and then his mum will be shouting up, sort of mm. come down for lunch, or, that, you know, standard. At least it was just that. come down for lunch, you know. <laughs> you know, put some clothes on or something like that. Because we had, I was uh, officiating at an online shiver, uh, so, I did, you know, you could do the share screen options. So I put the prayers up on the screen. But what I didn't realise also that I've got WhatsApp desktop notifications and a message came and it was from the wife. She was upstairs putting the kids to bed saying, the kids' toilet is blocked. Please, can you sort? Um, and that the, so I was hoping no one noticed. But at the end of the service, I'm going, Rabbi, very nice service. Now go and sort your loo out. <laughs> Sorry, you. you know. Um, so, um, at your, um, Joe, at your JSOC, are you, do you have support from, is there a, a team that you work with or do you have to do a lot yourself? Do you get a lot of support from the school? Is it part of the school? Well, uh, in lockdown we haven't been getting support but usually during the year we get, um, we get um, pay, the food's paid for. So I think it's paid for by UJA. You yeah, can correct is. me if I'm wrong. Oh no, it's very good. Yeah, 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 the JAMS the program. Yeah. Oh, but there's not been food. So during lockdown, did they send everyone an individual pizza or something? No, but I think they've been quite busy as well doing other things. And I'm not sure if JSOC's the priority right now. But no. I think it should be. Because at the end of the day, you guys, you're leaders, right? You're members of our youth. And by the way, the youth service is resuming this show out, so I can't, really can't wait to see you in person. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's great having people at Ian, which is why we've, we've brought you on here this evening, to show the community what's going on within our community. And, you know, I wouldn't even say you're our future because you really are our present. Well, I, th I think you need to tell you at UJA that because I'm pretty sure that the person who runs the JSOX was furloughed. So, <laughs> yeah, well, really, don't forget it's a charity. It's a charity, yeah. you know, um, and it's hard, you know. So you, you have to buy your own shawarma or your own sushi for your lunch and then. Talking about UJA, we had a uh, we had a UJA speaker come in and they brought us a UJA charity box which we thought was quite funny because we were funding UGIA to fund us. Oh, I see. Yeah. Look, all charities are finding it hard through the lockdown. I mean, I, I was in shul the past couple of days and they've got the pushka out there and I was thinking, you know, they raise about a thousand pounds a month from the shul pushka. Now, no minion for three months, you know, with 3,000 pounds down just for the other charities we support. So, and that's just us. There must be so many charities who are feeling the pinch. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if we if we could support them supporting us, supporting them supporting us, it's good. You know. I think there are a lot of people who have started their own initiatives though, are food banks, people doing the personal food banks and dropping oh. dropping toys they're not using off. So I think that has been a communal effort to support people who need, especially. Yeah, and also some people who normally support in a bigger way may struggle with their jobs being um either on furlough or just reduced work, etc. What I've done is, because I've saved so much in petrol, right? you know, we've, we've got four kids in three different schools to spend our life in the car doing school run. And it, I, I filled up the car before Pesach, and then I didn't fill it up again till after Shavuot. So normally I do it every week. Saved a fortune on petrol, so we decided what would have gone to petrol was in certain charities, which is a nice thing to do. I'm not showing off or anything. I just thought oh, you missed the man. Yeah. That's good. Um, mm. uh, and so Benjamin, um, how long do you think you'll still be in your post? Well, so we're going to be in for the first two thirds of next year as well, in person, okay. you know, bringing... What are your plans? What are your plans? Well, 
we have we have sessions twice a week, twice as many as Habs. Uh, oh, yeah. hope, to, hope to bring in lots of it's, good speakers. It's, it's, it's because it's because we have the Kavana and the numbers. They have to have double the amount of sessions. <laughs> hey, this is not a quality quantity argument, you know. Every every little helps. No, we've got we've got a lot of speakers in the works, you know, but we're keeping it hush hush for now. Yeah, and how do you get hold of your speakers? Do you have a network or you just do your own research and make Well, your... I mean it's a variety, lots of cold emails. Sometimes it'll be a friend of a friend of a friend. You know go in the Jewish community. U UJA yeah. provide a list of like a basically a menu of speakers um that you can choose off, but they also encourage you to um ask people within your JSOC for connections and bring in speakers from outside because they like JSOCs taking initiative themselves. That's good, yeah, it's showing your own uh, initiative, your own um, leadership as well. Uh, it's fantastic. Um, anyone else got anything interesting that you, that, any funny stories you've had or what, anything interesting you might want to plan for the future, which perhaps will encourage um, the guys and girls in your school to participate in what you're doing? Well, we certainly have a few big names coming at the beginning of September, but we'll have to leave those. Well, we're, but until they're one hundred percent confirmed, we'll have to yeah, same here. Leave, leave the names off. Well, well, I do have to give I do have to give a quick sort of shout out because what we've been doing, City JSOC, along with the JSOC from Manchester Grammar School, over yeah. lockdown, we've been doing a bit of a radio show. If you go on Facebook onto UJA, oh, with Hannah doing, from Manchester, yes, with your cousin, yeah, yeah Hannah, cousin, Hannah yeah, from UJA, had some big names on that. So everyone go check that out on UJA Facebook. Habs were off, but we're, we're a bit big. Sure you That's are. very good. That's at least they know to watch this space because you've got some great stuff planned. And how do you do recruiting? How does the recruiting work? Do you guys, do people know that they should come or do you, have you got to nag people like we've got to do in school? Yeah. But for your Jason at lunches, how, how do, do you yeah, have to recruit? It's society in the school. Um, everyone knows about it for our big events such as Holocaust speakers. We must have had 250, 300 people, a quarter of the school. Um, we had Eve Kugler this year, she was, it was amazing. We, the, the hall filled out in five minutes, the headmaster came. I mean, the big, the big speakers, the names will come. Um, and people, pe people, people know. People know Tuesday. Is, is JSOC day, E01, Tuesday. It's known as the JSOC classroom. Um, Fantastic. Yeah, I do follow your Facebook page. I see a lot of great stuff on. Um, and did you get a, like a, a high percentage? Like a boys JSOC on Instagram. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. It's wonderful. Um, and what percentage of non Jewish students do you get coming? I'd say we get five, ten non Jewish students week in, week out. And for the big events, you might get 50 to 100. I mean, we had Mark Reg in last year. That was amazing. That sold out. That was joined with the Politics Society. Um, and loads of non-Jewish students came, students of politics, history students. If you have high profile speakers, people will come regardless of, right, of religion. Yeah, fantastic. And the same, same at uh, UCS and, and City of London? Well, uh, I can just speak for UCS, but we've been, um, the speakers have been um, a lot more um, local to be honest we haven't had many high profile but that's what me and my co-leader are trying to change this year we're going to try and make it a lot more international and even we're yeah well, same as Habs we're emails emailing some cool people i think yeah, so that should be easier once the schools reopened fully etc yeah of course and how how have you found school in general over the lockdown has it been uh, classrooms teams How's it been working? I think I think also, well, my school definitely, and um, maybe the other schools here as well, have actually done quite a good job. Especially, we, I think we're quite lucky compared to a lot of other schools because we've had sort of online lessons every day, a, a full timetable on Teams with our teachers, so we can talk to our teachers. Which I know a lot of schools don't have that, so we're quite. I'm quite grateful for our school over this period. But you're we grateful. Did. Some people are glad they haven't got that. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, yeah. Was important. I think it's easier if you have a schedule and you all zoom in together. That's what my kids have got. Where some schools are just giving you, right, listen to this at your leisure. And that doesn't quite work. If you're not disciplined enough to do that, then, it, oh, then you just, just build up. Oh, I've got to catch up on this and that and the other. Whereas you have, if you have to be there at a certain time, you're there. You either listen or you don't. But at least you're there sort of thing, um, which is good. 
Oh, well, you guys, I just want to thank you so much for coming on and inspiring the nation. <laughs> thank you for having me. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Um, and, uh, you know, the Mishnah says, whoever, those who benefit the public, sin will not come, sin and evil will not come their way. So what you're doing is a great service to the community. You're inspiring others. And we're very proud of, of all of you, Benjamin, Sam and Joe, representing UCS, City and Habs. Have a wonderful evening and uh, do tune in next time with your Norris League TV. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. These boys definitely, you like you say, watch this space. They're going, they're ready, are somewhere and they're going to go further. It's amazing that they're doing such wonderful work for the youth. And so JSOC is the Jewish Society for Schools. Like I think we have that sort of in, uh, in the space called Hillel as well for universities. And so here they have it for the for the high schools, and um, I'm sure there are universities they, here as well. Universities here um, all have their JSOC, the Jewish Society. When I was a chapter in the north, we worked with them as well. Oh, so they put them in the high schools and in the universities. Yeah. yeah. Okay, wonderful. So I'm and sure often, they exist in. After, actually, I have to say that often those who are involved on campus, once they've left home and they're living uh, independently, it's those JSOC leaders are usually those who have been involved previously as well so you know they already drank the kool-aid yeah so what wants a leader always a leader so you know you can see potential there absolutely and i'm sure this exists for the girls school as well oh absolutely okay so i have to get on the case and find out who, who the leaders are and hopefully next week we'll yeah, have them on yeah and you can interview the girls okay wonderful yeah. So, we are now moving on to our Norris Lee family. Who do we have on this week, Rabbi Guttentag? Ah, well, this week uh, I went, I popped into, I did a garden visit to the Caves. I decided to meet uh, Gillian and Martin. It's Gillian's birthday today, by the way, so Mazel Tov for that. Oh, Mazel Tov, um, another one. Martin, very involved in the shul. Um, again, I talked before lockdown days, and, you know, shul every morning. Uh, he was telling me about his history. This is before, a while ago, he was telling me this. How he was involved with the uh, with the youth service and managing our youth directors. We're going back a long time. From when yeah, he was, hired Hailey. He hired Hailey, I think. Hailey Feller back in the day. There you go. Oh, the next door neighbours as well. Maybe that's, that's right. Fun. That's right. Well, that's good. Anyone who had Hailey knows what they're doing because Hailey's amazing. That's uh, what right. She, what she does in this community, often people actually don't know what goes on behind the scenes. She sure. Got great ideas and she implements them as well. So that is actually wonderful. Really, really but more amazing. recently, Martin started the film festival. He, he started film the club. club, and uh, he also started Coffee Conversation. Oh yes, he does. He starts things and passes it on. <laughs> What's their successful? Which is good. That's great. Amazing. That's great. Um, so let's see where he. Yeah, well, now he started a, his, his new shtick, uh, bike riding. So I went to have a chat with him about that. So you can have a look. All right, let's go over and see what he had to say. Ah, oh, good morning, Gillian. I see you're doing what you love best. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing really well. I'm loving the lockdown. It's been great in the garden when the weather's been beautiful. Have it's you've been enjoyed great. it? Could we have I've actually seen enjoyed you. it. I'm sorry to see it ending. Sorry to see we're all going back to kind of semi-normal. Um, I'll be happy if it continue the way it is. It's been great for me. That's marvellous. the Zooming. It, it's so nice to hear, you know, your positive twist on it. Are you missing going to shul for actual services? Because well, you're always there. I know, but actually I quite like sitting in my armchair watching Zoom. I love all the, the productions that the show's putting on. I'm sorry when it all stops. And oh. particularly if I'm on a Friday night, I think this could be one of the last perhaps, I'm not sure. It's under investigation at the moment, but there, there'll definitely be some kind of uh, uh, online continuation for our services. Um, where's Martin, by the way? Oh, Martin's probably out on his bike loves being on his bike. Oh, he's on his bike yes, again? that's where it's the happiest. Where, where's he gone? Oh, I don't know. Probably training. Are you, I think you need to really keep tabs on him. Or... Oh! oh, oh, oh. There should. he is. Oh. There oh. he is. Oh. Where have you been? I've just been out for a ride. I'm training for a Kef ride. In for Ke oh, I time. love your top. Oh, thank you. That is fantastic. Okay, we need to talk more about this. Oh. Why don't you have a you seat? You caught me unaware. Make yourself at home at your garden. Thank you. Look at that. I'm all sweaty. I'm not surprised. Oh, oh dear. What must people, what must you think of me? Why, what? I won't ask what you're doing here. 
But I just want to find out, you know, uh, uh, Gillian's asked me to keep tabs on you. Oh. And uh, I want to find out, you know, where you've been and why you're doing it, really. Well, okay, so I was first introduced to KEF. KEF is the charity that I'm riding for and hoping to raise money for. Um, it's, it's a Hendon-based charity. It was founded in 2006, just for a few children. Um, and it looks after people with learning difficulties and physical disabilities and offers a lot of relief to their families, obviously. They have a lovely day centre in Hendon, lots of fun stuff. They also have winter camps, summer camps. Unfortunately, they haven't been able to run them this year. Right. Right. But they still have the expenses. And what they're doing is they're bringing presents to the children to try and maintain some sort of normal life. They have a big bike ride which used to take place in May, but unfortunately there's been issues as you, I'm sure you're yeah. aware of. So it's ta now taking place in, in July the 19th and I've been busy raising funds for it. Um, how did I get introduced? I'll tell you how I met, got involved here. When my son first brought his, um, well, my, our future daughter-in-law around to us, she said to me, oh, Martin, I hear you're a really good bike rider. Well, I was, of course, I'm keen to make an impression of my future daughter-in-law, and <laughs> was, I was more surprised that people in Golders Green had heard of my prowess on the bike. So I said, yes. Your reputation I, had preceded you. It, uh, by a long way, yeah. by a long way. All the way about, to Golders Green? By about at least three miles. Exactly. So I said, yes, yes, I do like riding. She said, well, would you like to ride for Kev? We're having a ride in, in a week or two's time. Yeah, I thought, yeah, we'll go around Princess Park Avenue, up and down, say hello. Yes, great. A hundred miles later. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, a hundred miles you later. You got roped in. I got well roped in. Yeah. Well roped in. And, uh, but it was fun. It's a very good cause. Believe me, if it wasn't a good cause, I wouldn't get up at six o'clock in the morning. Fantastic. And do 30, 40 miles. You know, Colin Cavalci, I hope you don't mind me asking you this. You mentioned your son, Jonathan. Yes. Uh, he's my age. Oh, you're quite young then, it's a, for so, a rabbi. You're a bit like policemen, right? I'm trying to be you... politically correct okay, here. Fine. Are there any people your son's age or more like your age doing this ride? Actually, there's no one my have, age. Have I said it in a fair way? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. it's a fair question. <laughs> Let's put it down. most people are a lot younger than me. In fact, I think I'm the oldest one by a couple of oh, years. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Because someone else mentioned you're the fastest. Uh, no, no, don't believe everything you hear. I think it was your wife actually. Oh, it yesterday. could be, yes. Yeah, because yeah, it's when I leave the house. I'm <laughs> yeah. fast. Right, oh, very funny. Yes, yeah. When I come back, I come back a bit slower. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so, do you are you involved, besides for the bike ride, which is absolutely phenomenal, are you involved with Kef to see what, what goes on there, etc.? I see what goes on actually, and I, I've come across quite a lot of people who, are, uh, who benefit from Kef. Let's put it that right. way. How many children are involved? I think there's about a hundred or so now, plus the families. And since it's not just the kids who need the special... No, it's more the family. The, the family need daycare. Absolutely, yeah. Spot, that is it. amazing. So uh, because often what I've seen is when there's a special needs child in the family, it takes the parents' attention off the other children. And what they do is they'll give a bit of respite to them as well, which is phenomenal. So obviously a very, very worthy cause. And I can see you're, you're very passionate about it. I am, actually. Yes. Is, uh, I've seen the effect of it. and the help it gives families first hand. Fantastic. So how long have you been cycling for? Is it a new thing you've um, taken on? Or? Um, no, I'm, I'm, well, I started off as a mammal, if you like, a, a middle-aged man in Lycra, but I'm middle no age? longer middle-aged. Well, no, not, that was when I first started. Um, I've gone through middle age, as, really? you, as you commented. Yeah. I, did, I said nothing. I just said you that. inferred. I said I could be your son, that's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't, I'm not sure whether I'd like you to be there. Anyway, but we'll leave that. <laughs> But, so, I think maybe 20 or something years. Yeah, I oh, wow. Because I'm good for the environment and my oh, body. very good. I have to tone my so body. So, uh, do you cycle as an uh, um, alternative mode of transport? Yes. No, I, I, I try and cycle every day. I cycle to work every day. Fantastic. And back. How far is that? Uh, not a lot, actually. It's about three miles. So, it's good. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's, it's, it's the yeah. thought that counts. But you weren't, like, as a kid or a teenager, you weren't on your bike? Um, actually, my parents bought me a bike when I was about six. Two days later, it got stolen. Oh. I was in the sweet shop at the time. I had oh, you in the sweet shop. Yeah. Well, I had tuppence to spend, and believe me, tuppence in the 50s went a very long way. Yeah. And I came out, and 
Yeah. Where was my bike? Oh, yeah. So that was it for about 30 years. I always wanted to get on a bike. But then in those days it was dangerous. There were cars on the road. What, more dangerous than now? Yeah, I think it was actually. I think it was. But in what way? Well, the cars didn't. Cars were in more of a hurry and they just stopped. And this, now people are aware of cyclists. Okay. It was a bit of a, you were a bit of a sad creature if you were on a bike. I think you know, so. you're either working in the mills up north or something like that, and that's how you. What's work. wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with being up north. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, some of my best rub on him come from up north. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. It's a great place I was there this week. Watch the, if you watched last week's. Uh, I did see you on the you on the bridge at the bridge in, in the fog and the town is all mine. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, how have Kef? Let me ask you. Um, during the lockdown, um, because normally you, you mentioned they normally go away and it's been postponed. Have they still been able to support people during the lockdown? They've been able to support them on an individual basis. They dropped for maybe food parcels, presents, right. etc. For the, to the kids. Because I can imagine. Um, families stuck at home with special needs it must have been exceptionally challenging it's been very tough and i'm just wondering how those families would have been coping and what we even could have done for them well it's difficult because there's social distancing yeah um so all they can do is almost leave things at the doorstep right uh, so it's nice if the child comes down in the morning and sees on the doorstep a parcel for them bit a of love with their name. Yeah. bit of love bit yeah, of love absolutely. tlc yeah. We've got a contactless pushka for the shul. So instead of a, a, a sadaka box, people handling coins, yes. we, go, we now go around with a card machine, a cordless card machine. We tap in the set amount and people just put either the phone or the contactless card. Well, you know. Where are the old days when the shamans used to rattle the box gone? There's enough noise without that, I think. Uh, well, not anymore there won't be. Yeah, I know that rattling sound. But you yeah. see, this is it. Uh, because shul's been locked down, I've lost a source of donations right i used to shuffle between the aisles strict not doing doubling you understand of course oh you would never talk during that no no yeah. i wouldn't I, yeah. and i you ask for donations and people were very generous sadly i haven't been able to approach these people and i don't know where they live i know they live on seat number 116 seat number <laughs> 99 you're real sure man you're real sure right, but yeah. now so i must apologize actually for anybody who's missed me this year and i'm sure many people have missed the opportunity of giving to a a very worthwhile cause such as Kev and the more they give the more it encourages me to get out in the morning and leave the wife and cycle I mean some would say that itself is a worthy cause leaving the wife well it's get you out of the house a bit yeah well especially in this lockdown days it's the only yeah. exercise that Boris was very good at the early days he said people like me can go out for an hour exercise so I've had to cram in about 30 40 miles in that one hour you've done it it's been tough it's been tough. You've done 40 miles in an hour? No. 30? I don't know. I, many people use a speedometer, yeah. a Strava. I'm not, one, I'm not a numbers man. I go out. But you know how far you go. I listen to my body. That's what it is. Phenomenal. Yes. Sometimes you can't hear it above all the din and noise of everyday life. Yeah. But it's there speaking to me. And do you feel better for it? You feel more fit? I feel, Julian says, I come back like a new man. Oh, well, what's wrong with the old one? Well, this is it. She wonders where the old man went. The old man was better. <laughs> uh, it's phenomenal. You know what? I think many people watching this will be inspired, you know? Just get on your, you know, hence the expression, on your bike. Get on your bike. It's good for yourself, your mind, body and soul, and at the same time supporting a worthy cause. Other charities are available, I hasten to add. But this is a good one. This is a very good one. Yes. It's the one I'm working for at the moment, and the ride is on July the 19th. And if people see me cycling along through the suburb early in the morning, just give me a wave, drop a pound or two in my charity box or something <laughs> like that, and uh, send me on my way. I'll be more than happy. And will there be a grand finale to welcome you back? We can all cheer you on. Well, sadly not. They used to finish in Hendon Park with yeah. a big barbecue. I was there uh, last year's. My yeah, brother, but I, yeah. Think, I think because of... Well, I don't know. It depends what... The rules will be on July the 19th. Right. Because we want to cheer. Well, look, we are cheering you on from our home. You can line the streets of London and cheer me on. Although I don't know what the route is yet. Well, we're all rooting for you. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. That's um, good to know. Oh, well, Martin, good luck with the fundraising. Good luck with the riding. Thank you very much. And uh, this is marvellous. Thank you for meeting us here at, at Norris Lee TV. 
Kalakaban. It's my honor. There you go. My pleasure. Well, that was very interesting. Uh, we were hoping to meet some of his children and to, for, him, for him to tell us a little bit about what's coming up in the film fest with his film club. Uh, but he seems very passionate about his bike ride for Kef, that's for sure. Yeah, he does. Yeah, so this week, um, tomorrow night, we start uh, with a uh, cuisine a discussion. On va parler français. We have a French group that meets once a month, and that starts. What was that in English, please? Tu parles pas français. Votre femme parle français. You know, Malky, Repson Malky speaks French. Did you know that? Oui. <laughs> Très bien. Anyway, so tomorrow night we have a French group meeting and uh, hopefully you can join us with a little cuisine for, with our uh, Fabienne and Judy, our French local chefs. And we'll talk a little French and have a discussion about a moral issue. And on Thursday, it is a very solemn day. Yeah, Thursday this week is the Fast of Tamil. It's the day when the the calamities that led to the destruction of both our temples took place on that day and other calamities, the breaking of the tablets and many other things um, that uh, happened on that day historically. It's a fast day, one of the six fasts of the year. It comes in at 1.12 a.m. already, uh, which is late Wednesday night actually, um, till Thursday night at 14 minutes past 10. A long day. Uh, up north in St. Andrew, it would go like 11 o'clock, so you know, it's not complaint. But it's a sad day. Um, but w w what we are also doing, so the extra service of longer, longer Mincha and Marib, uh, we're going to be doing a memorial service uh, because, you know, we talk about going back to normal. Sadly, there are so many whose life will never get back to how it was beforehand because they have lost, lost their nearest and dearest. And of course, our hearts go out to them. Um, they not only have they lost a loved one, they, they lost out on having traditional shiva, having a, a full crowd at a funeral, um, and of course we're all here to support them. But what we're doing in the shul, uh, we're doing a special memorial service for all uh, the members we've lost and for members we have who've lost their members of their family. Uh, so families of those bereaved have been contacted with a special service at 7.30 p.m. in the shul. It will be live streamed here on Facebook Live, those who are unavail and unable to come. Um, and that's what we'll be doing on Thursday, so please do join. One does have to book in advance though. Right. Um, it is open to everybody, to the community. It's open to everyone, but you've got to book your place though, so ch keep checking your emails from the shul office. Absolutely. Uh, they won't let you in. It's part of the government's track and trace, etc. so you won't be uh, admitted if you haven't booked in advance they're quite serious about that so please do book in um, but again and, and I would stress this point as well nobody should ever feel pressured to come to shul right the That's shul cool. is open yeah. somebody's uh, you're, you're feeling vulnerable you haven't been well uh, never feel pressured even by the rabbi to say oh I'd love to see you in shul no come at your leisure it's a bit strange I've never said that before <laughs> but that's where we're at wonderful so, you know, it's, uh, it was exciting to open the show this week, there's no doubt. But, you know, there was something missing, I think. Don't you think there was that, you could definitely sense no children, no youth, although we're looking forward to having the youth services. Yeah, youth are back this week, but no children. And um, we were on a meeting with a bunch of rabbis and the chief rabbi came on and, and he almost had tears in his eyes when he said, for any chief rabbi to say, that children aren't welcome in shul. It's just unimaginable, but you know, that's where we're at. And you, we know it's all pikuach nefesh and it saves lives. It, of course we understand that, but it's still still very sad, sad thing to say and understand. And, it, and we, we did feel that lacking in shul. And it's not just that the fact that we can't have children, it excludes automatically a lot of parents as well, or at least one of them um, right. who can't come together as a family. So yeah, well, please God, the children will be back. We don't know, sorry, at this stage, how long it's going to be like that. You know, it reminds me of, you know, a few years ago, my, quite a few years ago, my uh, husband actually created, made a music video um, called Where Are the Children? And he, he, he actually um, went back in his day in Newtown Synagogue in Sydney, Australia. He was with an, an aging uh, population where there weren't much, many children. And um, it was actually recorded in Edmonton, in Beth Israel Synagogue in Edmonton, 
where when we first came, again, it was a graying population, but um, he managed successfully to rejuvenate it. And, you know, when we came to London, Baruch Hashem, we could see at Norris Lee, we certainly don't have that problem. We are hardly a week goes by when we don't have multiple bar and bat mitzvahs and we have um, many, several different uh, children's services, different group, year groups. And so when we came here, he said, you know what, I think it's time to put this video behind me. He took it down from YouTube. And he's like, you know, we have plenty of kids here. Uh, but sadly, looking around the show this past Shabbos, you know, this phenomenon is not quite behind us. And I want to warn our viewers that the first part of the song might be a little unnerving. You know, this, you could feel a little depressed watching it. But it's not to, designed to leave you that way because you'll watch at the, you know, hang in there. You'll see at the end, there's actually a song of hope. He combined it with a song that he wrote uh, many years earlier, a song adopted, adapted from Tehillim that says, Shiru Lashem Shir Chadash, sing to Hashem a new song. And we are beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel, and very soon we'll be there to experience our very own rejuvenation. So I give you Rabbi Daniel Friedman with Where Are the Children? No, I'm looking forward to this. Yeah. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> Is there a kids program in the synagogue? I sit here davening in this old synagogue. Young Kala right next to me has been in my row now for 53 years. Still we sit here praying Praying with no distractions Praying we'll get a minion I sit back Admire the architecture Hey Yankala Ain't this show so beautiful? Rabbi Yankala just nods in agreement But then Let's out a deep sigh Yes, but 40 years back it was full Where are the children? Why is the show so grey? Where are the children? Do they play? Where are the children? children today I think back when I was but a wee lad father would bring me to show and sit me on his knee standing in line to say good choppers to Mr. Goldstein the candy man sadly all Goldstein's back been closed since 1963 Where are the children? Why is the show so great? Where are the children? Do they play? Where are the children? They have left and gone away Where are the children? Chase them out Said if they wanted to Run and shout They should do it outside I better still stay home Sure the place is quiet now One can pray in peace But praying you call is my friend When we don't even have a million Where are the children? Oh, 